Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I'm super excited to be here with you today to talk about some proposed changes to peer review. Obviously, peer review has gone uh, under some different changes over the years. This one has twofold, some changes, but predominantly trying to make it easier to use the rules. Um, we did the clarified standards many years ago for the audit standards and the attest standards and SARS, but at that time they didn't update peer review. Uh, and so peer review still seems to be a little bit clunky on what's a, re uh, what's a requirement versus what's application material. And so they're gonna take the time now to really try to figure out a, the best way to make this a little bit more user friendly. So they issued this on September 15th, 2021, uh, and comments are due by December 15th. And again, the feedback that the AICPA staff basically received over and over again is that the guidance was difficult to navigate, read, and apply. Uh, and so as part of this, they really thought about, okay, what can we do similar to the other professional standards that we use for the auditing and accounting literature to make this a little bit more streamlined? So you're going to see predominantly, again, that these are formatting changes. So when we see them, they're going to be PRC sections, similar to the AUC sections or the ATC sections that we used. Uh, and they're going to be reviewed um, by uh, or um, first organized by type of user. For, so is it the reviewed firm? Is it the peer reviewer? Is it the administering entity? Whose responsibility? They're also going to have PRC sections by type. Is it a system review or is it an engagement review? So again, making it easier to find the information that you're looking for based on your role and the type of review that's happening. They are also going to move all of the relevant definitions to a centralized section, which again, very consistent with what we do in the audit standards, et cetera, is have this sort of definitional for any user um, that would be consistent. And then all audit standards, all attest standards start with the objective. And so that will be consistent in the PRC sections is to have these objectives first. And then again, separating the requirements from the application material. So the same uh, paragraphing, again, we'll start with that A prefix. So we'll go through all of the requirements and then we'll start over and then we'll go through the application material and the paragraphing will mirror what we see in all the other standard setting bodies. And then again, going to the bulleted list and the formatting to make it more readable. So again, the goal here was really try to overlap with what we do already for the uh, audit standards, et cetera. And so um, they really had to go through the PRP section, 1000, 2000, 310, or 3100, um, and then figure out is this requirement or is this application because that's not how they were set up. So one thing you would probably want to look at in reviewing this draft is do you agree with what's a requirement versus what's application material? Again, the intent of this was not to make uh, substantial changes uh, to what's going on for the reviewer, for the firm, or for the administering entity. The goal was to make it easier, but they did have a handful of substantive changes. And so um, obviously with COVID, uh, a lot of us had to do our peer reviews remotely, just like we had to do our audits remotely. Uh, and under the extant standard, uh, there is a requirement, again, regarding how much we do on site. Uh, and then you had to have approval if you didn't. Uh, if you weren't able to do that. And so then they had to waive it for a period of time due to COVID. And obviously we've proven that we can do things remotely. And so they are going to waive that requirement. Um, same thing for um, system reviews, having to have on-site office visits at different locations. So again, under the accident standard, you had to visit a sufficient number of offices on site in order to ensure that the quality controls were adequately communicated throughout the firm. Again, we feel like we can do this remotely without having to physically be present there. Um, they also removed the requirements regarding surprise engagements. So again, the, the, the extant standard requires that they, um, the reviewer in a system review to provide engagement selection to the firm and then you know arrive sort of unexpectedly uh, as a part of this, and we call those surprise engagements. Um, the purpose of this was obviously similar to the same rules that we have in the audit standards, is to mitigate risk that they're not um, you know, sort of taking advantage of that advanced list. And so obviously with systems and tools and things like that, again, we can uh, get comfortable. And again, they can always decide to do it. It's just removing it as a requirement. So at the end of the day, it's up to the peer reviewer and their risk assessment to see what makes sense for the individual peer review. Uh, in terms of the uh, definitional changes, the extant term significant deficiencies in a report with a peer review rating uh, of fail uh, describes the number of deficiencies rather than the severity. Uh, because of this, they felt like it was slightly misleading. Uh, and so they are going to remove the term uh, from the context of the peer review report. 
Um, one that's a little bit surprising to me is related to single audits. Obviously, single audits has been uh, something that was a, a major focus of peer review in trying to improve quality, right? So if you look at the studies that have been done, the percentage found by SMEs in enhanced oversight compared to what peer reviewers were finding uh, during their peer review in terms of deficient engagements uh, has improved steadily from zero to 70 something percent. So we're not catching everything, but we're catching a lot more. And so as a result, um, they removed the requirement that the peer review documents for single audits be included in what went to the report uh, acceptance body or the RAB. Um, I don't know, I've heard mixed feelings on this. I've talked to a few people. Some people still feel that there's room for improvement in peer review for single audits and that um, having that information can help us identify if something was done um, adequately. Um, other people feel like, you know, peer review being, you know, or single audits being called out there in that particular area, right? We already have special CPE requirements for them. Uh, we already have a technical review requirement, right? So some people feel like this is sort of penalizing those single audits. So we'll see if that makes it all the way through. And then removal of the guidance on performing and reporting on reviews of quality materials. Again, soon that will not be permitted. You could now have an, a test standard, but again, because we have these proposed clarified standards uh, and we have these changes to the quality control manual happening, they can have an attestation engagement on the uh, material, but the guidance associated with performing and reporting on quality materials um, will no longer be an option once this becomes effective. And so they you know, just kind of remove that and then you would have an attestation engagement instead. So again, really limited six items really in total that were substantive changes as opposed to formatting changes. Uh, the goal here was not to have something completely different. So if it is approved, the final standards will be effective for reviews commencing on or after May 1st, 2022. However, early implementation is not permitted. As you can only imagine, there are so many moving parts to this. They have the reviewer, they have the uh, agencies, right? All of these different things. And so as a result, we're just gonna start going forward. We're not going to have any early adoption uh, permitted here. So they would love your feedback on these changes. Um, if you think they missed anything, is the separation between requirement and um, an application material appropriate? Do you agree with the proposed substantive changes? Uh, so again, you have until December to give them that feedback. So thank you so much for joining me today on the Genuine Learning Blog, and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.